I'm Takur. Greetings. Greetings. Hello, How is everyone her. today? Hello. Are there questions for me? I have two questions, if I may ask. Yes. Hello, Takur. <laughs> this is Safira. Ah, Safira. How are you? I'm good. It's been a long time. Yes, um, it's been a while. <laughs> I have two questions. One is about aura colors. Does your race have an aura which reflects different colors according to health and emotions the way we do? And if so, can you give us a few colors that you have? Yes, we still, there are still auras in all the different um, dimensions that you can think of. They may not be as bright colored as the third dimensional auras, but they are still existent. And the reason why they do exist is because there are chakras in the auras, uh, as you know, the silver and gold chakras. And they are in all the, sh all the uh, dimensions. But yes, the colors are lighter, more... Of course, you have the pinks and the yellows and the greens that you see around the humans and the white. More, it is more as you would call, washed out in the higher dimensions. It looks washed out, but that doesn't mean it's less powerful. It's just a different shade of the similar colors that you use here or you have here on your planet. So the greens and the pinks are, are very powerful. Yellow is happy. Um, I'm not sure how they uh, translate on your planet, but this is how they translate on ours. The yellows are more of a happy color. The greens are more healthy, uh, or more like a healthy glow, or for affection sometimes. And there's uh, pink is a powerful color, which means that you're exuding a lot of energy and things of that nature. Uh, is that the same way as it is on your planet? It's similar, yes. Thank you very much. Thank you. I have one more question because many people have questions. I just want to ask to Kerr, can you help me later, not now but later, because I have some emotional pain and a, a karmic connection I can't get rid of and I need to in order to kind of raise my vibration at the moment. I, I understand. To, can yes, I can me? help you. Yes. Thank you. Thank you very much. But it's up to you to finish it. You, it's right. your belief system, but I can help you, guide you through that. But ultimately, you get rid of your own uh, problem. I understand, but I'm going to be channeling later, and I feel like I can't do it well because I'm. This is holding my energy down, so I just ah. need a little help. I just need a little help with it. That's all. I understand. Thank you. Namaste. Love you. Love you. <laughs> Love you. Namaste. Update on the colonies. Oh, the update on the colonies. Someone just asked for an update on the colonies. The colonies are back in full functioning order. Also, colony six is in full functioning order, which is the new energy healing colony, which uses Reiki, Qigong, uh, acupuncture, acupuncture, um, and all different forms of galactic Reiki. Uh, Arcturian uh, Reiki, uh, Lyran Reiki. We do not use the X3 energy as of yet. They're considering whether it is uh, necessary because humans do not have that kind of te technology to uh, use the X3 energy properly. So, but we are trying to with with uh, this extra colony, colony six, we're trying to develop the galactic Reiki which we want to teach to humans that will connect up through fourth dimensional energy and be able to be used by all people on earth as well as all people in uh, the fourth dimension. And so it is a little tricky because some of the symbols, some of the techniques translate very easily because they're pretty universal. They're galactic. They've been around for centuries and have been used by third, fourth, and fifth, sixth continuously for many, many centuries. There are some things that have developed into fourth dimensional 
uh, techniques, some things that have been developed into third dimensional techniques, fifth dimensional. We're trying to see if some of these techniques translate all the way through. And they should, because of their orange, origins, translate all through all the dimensions. However, we want to help them translate through all the dimensions as strongly and as most powerfully as possible. And so that takes uh, some tweaking on some of the symbol parts because, as you know, some of you learned about the Tinch Che or the Long Lasting Choku Ray or the um, Deep Healing Choku Ray. A lot of these are based on the spirals that um, are that you can create an actual vortex on the person or in the person and so spirals are very very galactic and they translate through all the different dimensions and this is a wonderful thing that we are learning so these are very positive things that we are discovering about the spiral symbols also some of the other symbols are translating all the way through as well so the Galactic Reiki is being developed on Colony 6. And also, many thing, people are getting healings there as well. But it is not the kind of healings that you would get in an operating room or that kind of thing. It is more of a... a uh, uh, you can heal some emotions. You can heal some pain. You can help relieve different things and start healing on major problems, of course. But uh, it's not like having an operation. So, but Reiki is a very valuable tool. It's a very valuable energy, and it helps to open up a lot of the different things in the brain that are used for psychic energy, for channeling, for telepathy, for telekinesis. It is the basic kind of energy. It is a, a healing kind of energy that opens up portions of the brain that are not yet open. So it is a very, very helpful and functional kind of energy. And the more that you use it, the more, the closer to uh, another an elevation of thought process you become. We're learning this from studying all the humans that use these things. Any questions? Yes, sure. She is. His audio isn't working. Okay, oh. Krellick. Uh, hello. Hello. Yes. Um, to care uh, for the past few days, the center of my body, I think, is the chak my chakras. The center of my body has been feeling different uh, I want to know if there's anything that's uh, that, that is happening to me it, the, your which chakra is it is it the heart chakra um, I don't know it's something it's in my forehead and it's in my throat and somewhere in the center of my body it sounds like you're having that you're uh, connecting up the the third eye with the throat with the soul chakra with the soul or perhaps even the solar plexus chakras this is whenever this happens you're going through a change of uh, thought processes with something on your earth planet are you changing um, uh, something major in your life at this point or are you thinking of changing something major in your life well, I'm thinking of increasing my psychic abilities. Perhaps the, that is the involvement of the third eye for sure. So therefore, it might be working with you to help you develop something else within your system. You realize the third eye in the psychic development because when you start reading psychically, you no longer speak. And so this is a change in the throat chakra as well. Do you understand that? Yes. So, yes, it sounds like you're going through some kind of psychic change. Oh, okay. And I do have one more question. Um, is there any news for me? 
the information from, from the colonies there is not any news from the colonies from for you but there's news from the canine planet and they will give you that themselves okay thank you you're welcome there's a question in the room from a lady here and she wanted Erica. to know about the 11 density beings that are coming in the solar system when yes, let me uh, translate that into there's a she is questioning about eleventh density beings that are coming into our presence or into your atmosphere actually in in the last it's it's been several months now so um, they are understanding that your enlightenment your ascension is not quite understood as well as it should be and they there's too many definitions for it and they're trying to come here to bring a unified thought to these definitions because actually it, the the definition of ascension is quite broad we make it very simple but it's more than one thing happening at a time it is the next step in your uh, your uh, evolution it is a different phase of enlightenment. It is uh, the change of the thought process for an entire planet. So there's many things that are going on and they would like people to understand that it is not just something <clears throat> they can do on their own, but it, it is a process that is the whole society brings themselves up together. <clears throat> this is something that you must realize. You cannot ascend by yourself. I mean, you, you may think that you, you can bring that process on yourself by becoming an, a greater person, but without the energies of the community, of the surroundings, of all those that are on the planet, you cannot reach a full ascension without the help of others, and that is another part of it that is misunderstood uh, because you you ascend as a culture I have a question for yes her. am I still not able to go to the colonies because I may have no you, they are taking you they're going to take you okay. they are taking you they have made uh, some improvements on how things are going and you are definitely going to come. And actually, they attempted to bring you once already, but you said no that night because of there was something going on. So, but you will be coming very shortly. Sure. Sheer. Greetings, my friend. Are you there? Mm, Sam. Hello, Takar. Hello, t Sam. How are you? Good, good. Thank you. And yourself? I am very well. Okay. Can you provide us some update on what's going on around the world? And especially in Southeast Asia, they seem to be uh, drying up and animals are dying over there, which that's uh, unusual because it's a tropical place. Southeast Asia. Mm -hmm. There are several places other than Southeast Asia that, that the animals are dying or the trees are dying. This is due to chemical uh, problems. The chemtrails are now affecting the life on Earth, as you know it. They are affecting trees. Certain species of trees cannot survive uh, with uh, the introduction of some of these chemicals into the atmosphere. They are now getting down far enough into the atmosphere where they are reaching the tops of trees, reaching uh, into places where animals have, have a habitat. And therefore it is a problem. And in Southeast Asia there is... Um, one moment please. Yes, there is a problem there due to the what when the it is a very it, are you talking about the wet areas down yes. there? Yes. Yes. That's what I thought. The rain is bringing in a lot of chemical problems to that area. 
Okay, that's why the animals are dying then from the poison. Yes. They are not able to handle the chemicals that are coming from that the chemtrail areas, and the that particular area uh, there is a certain chemtrail specific to that area that is not specific to the entire world and so that is another one of the problems okay there are about 10 different kinds of chemtrails and they each contain their own chemical uh, consistencies so uh, no, none of them are any good of course there are some that are better than others but this one seems to be very dangerous Okay, great. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay. Um, One moment. There is someone here. One moment. I'm just curious. I don't know if you had mentioned it before, but what is the purpose of the chemtrails? Because I see them. The chemtrails were orig a chemtrails originated with flight. Uh, the different things that uh, the different chemicals they use for flying airplanes and this is these are the chemicals that are put into the air because they get better gas mileage as you want to call it better mileage for the planes but a lot of it is very synthetic and very harmful and some of it is actually even um, super toxic the chemtrails have been increased. Yes. Because I see them during, during the night. I drop there and I have chemtrails in the sky. We are trying our best to remove some of these chemicals. There are particular chemicals that we remove because they are super toxic or have a greater effect on the planet than others. And so we can let some of them into there, but we are let some of them go that are not quite as toxic as others but still eventually these will get to the surface of the planet so why is it they can't stop it carrying because they can stop it except that that would stop uh, air travel for a while there was some earthquakes I understand about a hundred earthquakes went off in the state of Washington and then Andreas Falls is beginning to show quite a bit of movement and Late change. Can you update us on that? Yes. Um, there is a row of vortexes along the coastline that have been put there by a, a particular woman who is in tr that knows how to do these things that is holding the coastline together. 67% of it. Now, yes, there is so much tectonic activity right now all over the world the world is experiencing a 50 percent increase in uh, earthquake activity right now and it's very dangerous and also under uh, of course Yellowstone National Park and these areas you will find that animals have been affected by this as well that you'll find them moving from one part of the the country over there to the other part to a different part because they feel the vibration of the tectonic plates moving and they know this is a dangerous sign and so animals will change their placings due to this and that has been no, noticed quite a bit recently and also in Washington many and uh, and up into Canada as well into uh, the Canadian areas a lot of earthquakes small as they may be they are very still very dangerous uh, the San Andreas fault yes uh, there has been activity there but we have control of that at the moment um, the there will be more someone has placed actually more vortexes along the coastline because the, the prediction was that it will fall into the ocean up to Highway 5. And uh, that is a very, that's a lot of land. So that is being helped at this time, and we are really looking to help that in a, even a greater way at this time. And of course, all over the planet, 
there are earthquakes and uh, attempted volcanic eruptions, especially in the South Pacific. There's been so many volcanic eruptions recently, it's been quite devastating to even the... Um, there's a UFO colony there that is from, is from off-world, and they had to evac evacuate for temporarily because there was so much activity, even though they're immune to it in many ways because they can uh, move through temperatures v that are greater than a volcanic temperature. But the thing is the disruption there has been so great that uh, they had to move out for a, a while so that they would not be pushed around and things of this nature. So, yes. I would think that it's also being mindful that guy has to go through this. This is so much part of the shift. Eliminating is not the answer. No. So, um, yes, Mother Gaia is going through a great deal of shifting. However, it is, she will keep it together. I okay, I, I, I had a question. Real quick. Go ahead. Go ahead. Oh, okay, um, with all these races that are assisting uh, this planet now more than ever, um, what other can you mention any other alliances or any other groups that have now start to really want to be a part of the group for near colonies? Um, to be part of us, there are three uh, applications at this time, if you want to call them that. To um, become part of Grok Fichtnir, and we are very close to maybe in, including another civilization species into our group, and um, it is, but many people are uniting, many groups are uniting. In fact, Grok Fichtnir has united spiritually with, or if you want to say communication-wise with many other alliances. We may have some differences in our belief systems and how we do things, but we have the same final goal. <coughs> so in this way, we can connect to them and share information. However, we don't want to join alliances or whatever of this nature. Yes, there are many. Okay, I have Shear's question. He yeah. said, we are at the half of the year in terms of potential. Does humanity achieve its best potential or at least a good one? Can you for this that year? again? In other quite... words, since we are halfway through the year, um, has humanity achieved um, its potential that it could have um, up to this part of the year? That is a wonderful question, and if I had the answer to that, I would tell you. But I do not know what, I do not completely know your potential at this point. I do know much of it, but I am not sure what your full potential is, not being able to concentrate on more than the weather, the tectonic, the volcanic. I'm not politically active enough to know that answer. But I know that you are, have done a great deal of changing. That is true. That is a very true statement at this point. How about in the spiritual way? In the spiritual realm, many of you have gone through character changes due to disruptions in your lives and things of that nature which are making you stronger and more able to cope with the third dimension the way you should be able to. And also... Your level of understanding each other is starting to come together. Some of you are actually getting it. Wherever that to give up a little of self to understand somebody else can be of a great deal of... You can learn so much. Um, he also asked if there will be a second meeting after August. A second what? Meeting. A meeting with the oh, yes. There probably will be. There's usually three a year, sometimes only two. We've, uh, this will be the second one coming up August 1st through 3rd. And 
Um, if there is another one, it will probably be at the end of December. Okay. Um, I have a request, a personal request um, for Zenaida to occur. I yes. was wondering if you could help her with some healing on her hands. Um, yes. She's struggling we with that. I will get in touch with her. Okay. And also um, for Maria, um, in her it's a bit uh, different. No, I understand what Maria is going through now. Okay. It is more emotional than anything. Yes. I understand that. And I have, okay. I have looked in on her just recently, but she does not know that. Okay. But I did look in on her just recently. All right. Thank you. Um, I also wanted to know, um, there seems to be a lot of confusion between density and dimensions. And I was wondering if that's ever been talked about the DETs to come to a consensus. Yes, on there is no galactic consensus on dimensions and uh, densities because... Uh, their perception is, each one has different perceptions. And the reason for that is because they are in densities that are different perceptions than you are in yourself. Now, for your density, we explained it to you, and the Akashic Record gave it to your planet all the different varieties of understandings so that each of you individually could understand it the way you can see it best. Now, if they were all to be put together, mm -hmm. it would be, some people think, say, dimension one, some people say dimension three or density one, density three, they would be the same. Do you understand? It would be, there would be some of these things that would come, and there would probably would not be so many diverse uh, diversities, but it is not going to happen in this in your lifetime because we're more concentrated on the ascension process than teaching these kinds of things which are really not they should not matter that much oh because it people get very confused over that they get very confused but if they would understand how simple the ascension really is the densities wouldn't matter as much it's 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 just a, a matter of tomato, tomato. Okay, but the densities, the density is ref, it's within the dimension, right? The densities are within the dimension, yes. Okay. And some dimensions, they they misname them because their a dimension may have a, a fourth dimension is maybe a fourth density to them but if in some ways a fourth dimension is not necessarily a fourth density so it can be very confusing it depends on how it's taught okay um and the other question i had and correct me if i'm wrong um I get the feeling that Lyrans physically have not changed since the Orion Wars. Um, if that's so, what's what's special about the Lyrans that has allowed them for that not to happen? Well, there has been some changes, but it's not been much on the physical side. It's been more on the mental side, more on the... <coughs> Uh, evolution of uh, thought processes and things of that nature more than physical evolution. Does that answer your question? Yeah, see, because from my understanding, we humans are going to change <coughs> physically. You will, but not as much as you think. Not right away. It's a slow process. It does not happen that quickly. But there, there has been changes on your planet that have been quick and have been very diverse. But that is not what is going to happen with humanity. Your changes will be slow and uh, specific. 
but it, it will be in the in the physical sense, not yes. There will be physical changes, and that is due to what? Because of telepathy will cause that. Because of the chemicals in your air and compounds. Because of how the sun is going to uh, come more directly to you. Your visions will be different. Your skin will have to change a little bit. Yes, there will be many changes, but they will be slow and specific. Okay, um, a, a spirit had came through me, um, a very high spirit, and he spoke about um, a mutation in humanity. Um, he may not be talking physical. Or okay. was he? Can you tell me what he said? He wasn't specific whether it was physical. He did say that a mutation was going to be necessary for humanity in order oh, to go yeah. on. He is correct. Okay. So... And that is something that will be very specific, but it will be a slow process to get there. And you will see, uh, as time goes on, your skin will change, your eyes will change, uh, your ears will change, you'll use your voice less, your mouth will become smaller. But these are thousands of thousands of years of evolution. Okay. But that's why I was asking you about how was it that the Lyrans did not, because they didn't... The Lyrans did not change because they did not... The surrounding atmospheres and uh, physical dimensions that we were working in did not change that much. Whereas your planet is changing because the air is getting thinner, your more sun is getting through because your atmosphere is... Ozone layer is disintegrating. You have more chemtrails. Your the sun will become brighter. Many, many, many things. Your skin will have to change a little bit to be able to bear the sun's uh, effect on it. You, is that also where the hybridization will help? Hybridization will help that. Yes. Okay. But you see, your planet is changing at a drastic rate, and so therefore. You will your your civilization will have to change to keep up with those changes in your um, your atmosphere. Whereas our atmosphere did not change that much over the, over time since we were living in ships for quite a while, and since are the planets that we developed and some of them are um, made by us. We made some of our own planets, made some of our own habitats, I should say. So therefore, it's, it hasn't changed that much, so there was no necess need for us to physically evolve, but mentally we needed to evolve, and so that, therefore we did. Oh, okay. Now I understand. So due, due to the, the planet changes, it's going to be necessary for, in order for humanity to survive. Correct. For the physical that, change. Yes. It makes perfect sense. Okay. Um, thank you. I, I was trying to, to understand that, um, though I did have, somehow I have the knowledge that the Lyrans have not changed. Yes, but. they did not change that much. The tails are getting smaller. That is the biggest change. The, the tails were once longer, but now they're no, needed, no longer needed for sensory perception for uh, because we are no longer being attacked from behind the way we used to be. So therefore, there is no need for the tail, and that is the biggest part of our change. Okay. Thank you. Um, I had one from uh, Slava. He said, hello to Kerr, about 20 days ago, I believe we were going somewhere, but I'm not sure. I remember someone so beautiful and strong, and then I remember someone spoke uh, with me so lovely and gentle, like with a part of a family. Yes. There is one named Arabella that spoke to you. She is okay. a hybrid child. Okay, and he says, I'm not sure, but perhaps it was 
A L Y O S H A. Alyosha. Yeah. I will have to. I'm not sure if that is the correct pronunciation. There are several children with similar names to that. There is Alicia. There is Alosha. There is, but there is no one called Al Alyosha as exactly as that. But there, it could have been any of several children that have been named from their parents, very similarly to that. Okay. Um. Carol, when you said Arabella, is that my hybrid child you're talking about? Yes. Yeah, okay, thanks. I just wanted to check. Thank you. Yes, it was Neil's hybrid child that visited there as well. His children are very special also. Okay. Um, I had actually have several dreams with a little girl Yes. That keeps um, connecting with me, and I don't know why I feel like she's her mine. That she's part yours. Yes. I will have to. I believe that is. One moment. I no longer am in charge of the hybridization program. There was too much for me to do, and I had to delegate that to someone else. But I still can get the information. Talalaka. Her name is Talalaka. And yes, you had something to do with her birth, yes. Okay, because she's been connecting. She if you would like up. to give her a name as well, something you can remember her by, her name is Talalaka, by her parents. And with your, you, there is some of your DNA in her. And um, well, we'll talk about that some other time. Okay, but she is young, right? She's Very, very young, yes. She's a baby. Okay. Yes. All right. Thank you, Tucker. And that was not something that that I sanctioned, but it it did happen. And Telalaka is beautiful and wonderful, and I hope you will be happy with that. Yes. Um, yeah. She she kept showing up. I guess she just wanted me to know about her. Yes. I must go now. Thank you. Jakar, may I ask you one quick question, please? Yes, Safira, <laughs> continue. Thank you. Really quick. Um, I have heard there are two physical Pleiadian healing chambers now on the earth. One is in Virginia and one in South Dakota, where people can actually go lay down and receive a specific type of molecule for healing. Do you know yes. about them, and are they effective, as they say they, they are? They are effective, yes. They are, we are not giving them much attention because if we did, they may be closed. Okay. Thank you. That's what I wanted to know. It, it would be worth a trip there, though, if you think. Yes, most definitely. Okay. Thank you so much. Thank you. You're welcome. I love you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Okay. we got to let Tukur go. Yeah. So. Much love and you. namaste. Thank you for the update to Kerr and all the information. Have Much a wonderful love. day.